in Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana, there is a nondescript hallway with a blue laminate door that looks like it was taken off of a porta potty. It leads to a tragically 70s wood paneled conference room. Uh, the base is skiff. Uh, inside, at the conference table, beneath the faded American flag on the wall, uh, in the padded chairs with the ripped vinyl, uh, and the dead PowerPoint projector sitting in the middle of you, uh, there are three people. Uh, one is a tall, square-shouldered, roughly 40-something black man. He gives you a polite smile as he sort of looks expectantly up at a red light that is off on the wall uh, while he picks his calluses on his hands somewhat apologetically uh, as if waiting for his cue in a play. Um, who are the two people sitting across from him? Michael Kincaid uh, is a uh, 40s, uh, early 50s looking man, glasses, uh, grain hair, extremely fatigued, bags under his eyes, um, and a nervous thumbing of his fingers on the table in the room uh, without consciously realizing it as uh, looking more like a man waiting for the executioner to arrive, um, you know, or a uh, waiting to hear the bad news. Yeah, and the bearer of bad news and the executioner is uh, putting a, a briefcase down on the table. He's uh, a tall, 60-year-old white man in an ill-fitting business suit, pallid, freckled, thinning, gray hair that used to be thick and curly. And he, uh, uh, he too, looks exhausted, miserable. Um, with this sort of tinge of uh, impatience and anger as he uh, sits, down, sits down and looks back at the door and sees the light come on that indicates that the room is secure from every kind of potential eavesdropping. And uh, he turns and looks at Kincaid and takes a breath sits down, looking kind of schlubby, tired, and says, all right, Kincaid, what the fuck? Yes, uh, Director Manon, I, uh, uh, well, uh, where do you want to begin? Um, we, we have three agents. Uh, I can, I can talk about any of them or the, or the vector, um, or where it came from or what we're doing with it. Um, there's, uh, I don't know how much of the briefing you read, but uh, it, yeah. we're, we're here for a we're here for a we're here for a what sounds like a threat to the program. The details, the op. We, that's a that's a whole other conversation. I'll review that. We'll have a talk about that. That's not a matter for security. He says, glancing at their quiet companion. Uh, the man puts a callus in his hand and sort of tears it off with his teeth before, you know, putting it in the stack next in front of him, sort of waiting for his turn to talk and nods. This this operation involved three agents, uh, James Gideon with the U.S. Marshals and then uh, Agent LeBeau and Stevens uh, with the EPA. Uh, right now, Gideon is in the uh, hospital in Helena being treated. Uh, he is under custody. And uh, Agent Stevens escaped uh, arrest and uh, is currently um, dealing with a source of the vector at the Oakland Pit, which is a uh, it was an EPA super fun site. And this company, Benthic, put a vector in there, uh, some sort of fungal sample. And uh, he has some thermite and he's he's dealing with it right now. I'm waiting to hear back from him, but uh, LeBeau... Right, right, look, look, yeah, look, look, yeah. look, 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 yeah. look, 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 uh, uh, kind of, look. kind of leans forward. Um, his hand's a little jittery, you know? It's like like the, uh, maybe the off-brand prescription medication that he 
took earlier is finally kicking in, but it says, look, we need to save the details. The director's taken an interest here. Understand me? Uh, y- yes, director. All right. The real director, my boss. It's fucking Montana. Everything's a disaster here. So uh, we need to make a couple of decisions. First thing is exposure. What's the status of the containment? Is it squared away? How confident are you and your man putting it into the spread of this thing? Well, Stevens should be able to get the, the source of the vector in the pit, but there are people who have been exposed to it at the hospital. Um, there, I don't know how many civilians were exposed to it uh, because... They brought the the infected bodies there for uh, well, they have a more they have a you know I don't I, I don't know I don't think it it only seems to spread through direct contact it, it's uh with a with an infected source so uh, there would be ne- a necessity of some uh, kind of cleanup there but um, I have been thinking about a solution we can LeBeau is infected and but did escape custody he's at our safe house now and we could pin everything on him as a rogue someone who has gone postal or is, you know, uh, as a vendetta and is, as broken and isn't using something to make people sick, you know? And so we could, we could put everything on him and, um, uh, he's already infected. He's probably, yeah, I don't even know if he's going to live through the night. Um, so we, 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 we could just, uh, uh, so yeah, I don't, I, I don't know, but, uh, we could, if that we do that, we could just have regular authorities come in and uh, uh, quarantine the hospital. I think everybody's every every it's either at the pit or the hospital. So um, the pit's being taken care of. And so if we can <sighs> quarantine the hospital, I think it'll be contained. Jesus. So you want to burn your own man on this? He um, I don't know what got into him, but he shot a cop and didn't kill him in a suburban street and just with multiple witnesses and they were just breaking into a house. They could have talked. They, they failed at the deputy. They were, they, I, I don't know what he did. I don't know why he did that. He just, he just started shooting, uh, for no reason. Um, I, I, uh, there's nothing. You said this, this infection is this infection hit him. Like he's, he's, he was exposed. Is, yeah. He's got it. I, I, Think he's what a, I'm he trying to get exposed. at is do we have a, do we have a plan B? Um, he's at the safe house on on this base uh, that I, I've set up, um, and you know he stole a cop car to get out of custody uh, and drove it there. Uh, I don't think anyone saw him, uh, but um, he's just waiting there. Um, he, he's either. I told him I, I left some uh, sleeping pills there for him to take so he could calm down. So maybe he took those and he's just knocked out. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't see. A, a, I don't uh, know. The, the man reaches across and puts his hand on yours. He broke the first rule. Didn't he, Kincaid? He got caught. Yes. If you That's don't know. all it takes, you don't need to say anymore. I didn't see anything in his jacket that would indicate this behavior. Um, I, I, I really didn't think he was, I, I, uh, expect this kind of thing from, you know, I, I, I'm at the, know at the tomorrow problem, yeah. son. Yeah. I'm here to deal with today's problems. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it'll be okay. Just calm down. Take a breath. Okay. We're going to get you through this. Yeah. Man, man and man and kind of sags back in his chair and looks between the two of them with a look on his face that doesn't look like he's convinced that everything's going to be okay and we're going to get anybody through this. Um the only uh the it, uh, speaking of containment though the the uh, only other thing I can think of is uh the company itself where the, all of this ha- started from uh Benthic which uh is an affiliate of March Technologies, um, so I did not inform the agents about that link, and I don't know. Yeah, what Yeah, Manon Manon kind of shakes his head and has this sort of bleak smile on his face. And this is, yeah, old uh, 
It's family, right? What are you going to do? All right, so... Shit. Look, give Branson here the details. You've got agents still in the field. Um, they need to deal with this company. If this is a spinoff of March and it's, and it's putting something out into the world, then that's on us. We got to stop it putting something out into the world. I'll take some names and make some calls. Do what I can to smooth some of that, that over. Yeah, I don't think there's anything to be done about your boy, though. Maybe he was in, maybe the the uh, the thing changed his behavior. Um, I, I don't know, but um, no. we can hope. That's on your guy, your 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 team too. Is Gideon get, seems get to rid be. of get rid of the rest of the vet, get rid of the rest of the the sources, and keep an eye on anybody that might have come in contact with it. Uh, yeah, yes, I will uh, be monitoring them, uh, Gideon and uh, uh, Stevens, a while to make sure that they are not infected. Stevens especially because he's diving. In. It's a, it's an underwater. It's an open. This whole like contaminated pit of uh, sludge left over from copper mining. Uh, dangerous even without that thing in it. Uh, well, we just need to make it safe enough to make it the EPA's problem. Yes, but I think if you can, we can, we can pin it on, on LeBeau, we can, uh, we, we can break, we can quarantine the hospital and, uh, that, that'll be, it. I'm, I'm sorry you had to come out here, uh, director. All right. Branson, you have jackets on everyone. So see if there's any loose ends on LeBeau's side. They're going to come back to bite us once this is taken care of. I can tie those off. Yeah. All right. Uh, Kincaid, I'm going to, I'm going to go. We've all got some work to do here. Yes. Just remember our job is we've got to protect all of them kind of glances, you know, or or sort of nods his head out to the, the whole wide world beyond the room. To do that, we've got to protect us. Yes, sir. I I understand. Uh, The man gets out a handkerchief and unfolds it fastidiously and and dusts a little pile of his dead skin calluses into it before closing it. And says, it was good meeting you, Mike. Um, I I wish I could say the same. Um, He holds up the little handkerchief. Be careful not to leave too much of yourself behind in this job. It's easy to do. And uh, then he walks out. And Kay kind of yeah. takes out his own handkerchief and wipes the table down. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man, uh, 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 man and gets his things together. So, so. How's, uh, how's Lisa? Is she hanging in there? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's a, she's a real trooper. She understand. I, I'm most, uh, I um, uh, her sister's up uh, uh, with her right now. I uh, cause you know, I had to come here, uh, and stay. Uh, but you know, I'll I'll uh, as soon as this is ba- as soon as this is over with, I'll be able to fly back and uh, see her again. Um, but yeah, she it's uh, it, she's responding well. That's good, you know. Um, and yeah, uh, he man and man and sort of nods says, well. That's that's good to hear, like as if that's sort of the the extent of uh, what empathy he can afford to uh, to supply now. Mm-hmm. And says, so, uh, "Take care of it. You know where to reach me. If anything uh-huh. goes, if anything gets worse." Yes, sir. Yeah, he turns around and opens the door, and the the little red light, you know, is uh, shuts off again as he. Leaves it closed, leaves Kincaid alone, and the red light comes back on with just him in the room. <laughs> Kincaid, Kincaid finally just remembers to untense and just lets out a, a, a very deep and sad sigh. So coming out of there, um, Manon 
joins Branson walking down the hallway, one of these random military base um, hallways. And uh, Manon kind of looks at Branson as they're walking and says, what's your read on him? Needs to keep a tighter house, but aside from that foible, I think he's got potential as a future asset. There seems to be a pretty convenient narrative waiting for us in that house. Once you're a cop killer, who could blame you for not wanting to go inside? A lot of stuff can happen on the way. Well, always a silver lining. So they can head out at that point. Hopefully out of Operations Officer Kincaid's life forever. There's no clock on the wall in the meeting room. There's, there's nothing to, uh, to tick the time down that you can hear. There's, there's, only, there's only Kincaid, Operations Officer Kincaid, and the program, at least as far as his agents know. His real name? Who knows? We don't need to know. The agents certainly don't need to know. But for now, it's just him in the room, in the silence. The glaring red light that promises security. Staring and thinking and what's on his face, what's in his mind. Kincaid is thinking back. Scent of potpourri uh, is is in his memory. That's the one. It's a it's a scent that he now associates uh, something that the the house home smells of. Uh, he sets it up to make things smell nice uh, for Lisa, uh, especially before he has to leave for work, as because she mentioned once that she liked the smell, and so. He always he always gets it uh, for her. Probably doesn't even like it anymore. He realizes probably might probably is uh, not that fond of it uh, since he he's gotten so much of it over the years. Uh, he doesn't really know what else to get her uh, during these times. What she wants is him to be home. He can't. Uh, Lisa is on the back porch uh, watching it rain and um, putting another blanket on and sort of numbly allowing the the Netflix on the TV that Mike set up out there to roll on to the next episode of Kitchen Nightmares, even though she hasn't been appetized for food in longer than she can remember. Um, and she adjusts the knit cap on her skull that her sister's friends at work made her sort of resigns herself to watch the water bead down the glass and uh, wait for the conversation she knows Mike has been avoiding having with her for the last couple days. Uh, hi, you, you all settle up here. Do you need, do you need some tea or anything? Um, I, uh, Reset the the potpourri uh, a little a little bit, but um, uh, honey, I um, uh, I, I I'm so I'm really I'm 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 so sorry, but I I have to go. Uh, there's something that came up, um, and I have to be on site to deal with it because of you know security and all that. They don't have enough people with. I you know you know. It, don't worry, you, your sister's going to be here. Uh, not just later in a couple hours. Uh, you, you know. Um, so I just want to make sure you have everything before before I go. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm good. Uh, you you're just flying out tonight. She's yeah, wiping tears from her eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. How long you'll be? Probably just a couple, hopefully just a couple days. This is just, um, you know, these systems break and uh, they need 
somebody they trust to fix them. And that, that always happens to be me. I, I, uh, uh, she takes off the cap and exposes her bald head. Like you tell me if something was wrong, right, Mike? Yeah, of course. Of course I would. I, I doc- told you, I, t- I yeah. told you when I got the diagnosis, I, I came straight home and yeah. I told you something was wrong and you tell me if something was wrong, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, things are, are wrong, but it's, it's, it's a work thing. And, and, you know, I can't talk about that. It's, it's, you know, uh, I, you know, Mike is trying to look her in the eyes and it's really hard. Uh, uh, she yeah. shakes her head and shakes the thoughts away and goes, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, the new drugs that Dr. Phillips has me on, they just, you know what they do to my mood and I haven't been sleeping. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. You just, you read all of these stories, these horror stories about husbands and they just, they just leave the second someone gets sick and you just, you have nothing to do but sit here and think about it. And I'm, I I know you're a good man. I know you're loyal. And that you yeah, would never uh, leave yeah, anybody yeah. who's in trouble behind or anything like that. I know. I'm just sorry. I'm just, it's, it's hard sometimes. I know. I know. Um, Andrea will take care of everything. She's doing a great job. I, I got my hat. I got my shows. I'm, I'm going to be good. You, you, you focus on work. It's going to be okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I will. Um, okay. I, um, I love you and I really, I really wish I could. I know, I, I know, did. baby. I know. Yeah. I love you too. I love you too. Um, goodbye. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll call you when I get off the plane. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I would never leave you. I, I don't deserve any one. I, 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 I it's okay, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's on me. It's on me. Yeah. I, no, I it's you're... not. It's not. You're, you're, uh, it's, it's unfair. It's unfair to both of us, but we, we just, this is the best for, no, that's, that's too dark. Um, I know you would never choose this. You, you would never choose. No, I, boy, I wouldn't. Uh, now that I know I uh, would have chosen a different career, but those, boy, those recruiters out of the college campuses, man, they really get you going in these uh, career tracks. Anyway, good. I love you so much. Uh, he does kiss her on the cheek. and. Uh, awkwardly embraces uh, her while standing up and yeah uh. Uh, she goes back to watching men scream at each other across a stove uh, with the sound off I have a question as as a, a sort of a handler question here mm. yeah. about Lisa mm-hmm. when it's just her again is, uh, is anything on her in her demeanor indicate whether or not she knows how full of shit he is uh yeah because once she hears the caller pull out she she turns off the tv and just stares at the rain for the rest of the day so Kincaid is still in that conference room Mm -hmm. thinking still alone thinking of how uh that last conversation, he got his uh, exhausted, sick, cancer-riddled wife to apologize for him leaving. And, uh, and that's how you lose a point from a bond. How long does it take Kincaid to collect himself and get up and get back to work? Where does he go first? He, it takes him a good 10 minutes uh, to uh, realize he's just thinking about that and not, and he has a lot of shit to do. Uh, and then he rushes out um, and uh, gets to making calls uh, about, um, you know, a, a wellness check on, uh, or he, he goes first. To get the to see if uh, uh, Branson has sent the uh, all clear sign, whatever whatever method they use to, uh, and once he receives that, um, then he starts setting up the frame up of doctoring evidence and uh, uh, you know setting up 
uh, you know, faked notes from LeBeau about getting revenge on on his bosses at the EPA by faking an attack and, um, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, he, he is, uh, it, it takes, uh, another couple of days, uh, but. So I guess, uh, I, I guess we can, as, as, uh, uh, I think as we're looking at, at Kincaid working on a new document on mm-hmm. his computer that claims to be, uh, some kind of a manifesto memorandum from, uh, Agent LeBeau. Welcome to Delta Green Killing Field. This is Sentinels of Twilight, a scenario in the Delta Green Handler's Guide. And we have uh, three agents uh, here about to embark on the mission. But before we get into the scenario, let's introduce the players. Uh, We have a returning player, uh, Jacqueline Brick. Uh, who was in, who played Lydia Key uh, in Last Things Last. And uh, Jacqueline, if uh, for people who haven't listened to that episode, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure thing. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Brick. I also go by Jax Romana. My pronouns are she, they, and Faye. Um, I am a writer, editor, game designer, doer of all things game. Excellent. And then we have two new agents, the first of which is familiar to listeners of uh, my other podcast, Roleplaying Public Radio. Uh, it's Bridget, uh, the most innovative. Is that why we're not doing the cold open? Yeah. Yeah. It's for, this is for a different podcast. I, I, was, I, I was like, where's the Hey, I'm Ross? I was going to do the Hey, I'm Ross bit. I was like, maybe I'll just talk over him and do the Hey, I'm Ross bit. <laughs> Uh, yes, but this is our most innovative GM at RPPR. Uh, Bridget, please tell the listeners who aren't familiar a little bit about you, I guess. Yeah, um, I'm an award-winning game designer and industry-leading author. Uh, that's what I put on my business cards. It sounds really good. I've been on RPPR a lot, so if you want to go listen to stuff I've been to, there's the Bridget tag on RPPR. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, most recently, you were in Cointract Island, uh, uh, our Fate Core survival horror campaign. Yeah. Wait, how many awards do I have to win to get my own RPPR tag? Uh, well, you already have Just the one. tag. Yeah, oh, yeah. sweet. Yeah, and we're all we're technically all award winners because we all won the Diana Jones Award for actual actual play. play. Go team! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Yep. Uh, yes, and that's our third player, uh, Winter. Hello, um, I'm Winter. I use she/her pronouns. Um, you may also know me as Lydia. I use both pretty interchangeably. And honestly, I, I don't I don't do much outside of playing games. All right, I'm going to steal your spotlight because I forgot to add my own pronouns, which are also she, her. Mm-hmm. But I did forget my own intro, so I'm using yours. Well, it all worked out. Yeah, this is the the weekend. Uh, so as we begin the game, it is the weekend of the 4th of July, leave 2017. <laughs> all of you are near or in California. And for the purposes of this operation, because you're the ones who are closest uh, when the call went out. And uh, so we'll begin with our recurring player, Lydia Key, uh, who is an analyst for the State Department. You may be stationed normally in D.C. Uh, as an analyst, but you were in California when uh, you got the call to go on your next mission. But before that, what happened to you after the operation in the scenario Last Things Last? Uh, What was uh, Lydia up to? Lydia did not punch her case officer. She tried really hard. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. She's still angry about that. Uh, She went home to Washington, D.C. She spent some time with her girlfriend, who I thought she had a girlfriend listed on here. She does not. That might be another character I have. Weird. Uh, I mean, you, we, you, if you want to change one of your names of your bonds to that, that yeah. happens sometimes when you come home from a mission, you find you don't yeah. have a girlfriend. Well, anymore. she, yeah, fair enough. We'll say she had a girlfriend and that she lost a girlfriend. But, okay. Uh, she spent time with, we will then say she spent time with her mentor, Dr. Kelly Bardlin, mm-hmm. who is one of the professors of international relations at Georgetown University. And she also uh, spent time training up her firearms. Okay, so that is a home pursuit. So 
if you want to do that, that will reduce one of your bonds by one point as you let those responsibilities lapse. But then you then make a test of that skill. And if you fail, uh, you gain one D 10 points okay. in that skill. So, um, all right. Well, since I am spending time with one of my bonds, mm -hmm. um, I would like to keep the score at where it is. Okay. Just, you know, but well, I will reduce one of your other. Yeah. So which one I will, I will reduce my other two bonds to 10 from 11. Uh, you only have to reduce one bond. Oh, way. well then I will reduce my mom's bond. Mm -hmm. There we go. I never call her anymore. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and roll your firearms. And if, you and if I fa if fa fail, if I you gain one D 10 points in that skill. Okay. I fail. Okay. So go ahead and add uh, 1d10 points. What would that... How, and let me know what you roll. Uh, so I rolled a 7, so that'll bring me up to 47 in firearms. Okay, very good. So yeah, a lot of time on the range, getting a lot more comfortable drawing a firearm and using it. And uh, you, try, you train with several different weapons, not just handguns, but rifles, shotguns. Uh, you mm -hmm. have a lot more familiarity with just all, all the weapons a civilian can get their hands on. But you are in... California, uh, when you get a call. Why uh, am I in California? You could be there for a work conference. It could be for a, maybe you're called over for an event to translate. Um, I will, I, she's a very, she's a very good translator. So translation works fine. Okay. Yeah. So you were, you were in there for state department work translating. Maybe there, they didn't have enough people at a, uh, one of the facilities there and mm -hmm. uh, they needed, you know, trans just routine work. Right. Um, uh, you get a call from Michael Kincaid. Uh, no. Yes. And he says, I, I, I'm sorry, agent key, but, um, we, uh, need you, you there, there's something happening in Yosemite national park. and You are one of the closest agents we have He's got to be shitting me. Uh, no, I, I am not. I, uh, will give you full briefing, um, at this office. It's outside of Sacramento. There's only a few hours away from uh, the park, and uh, it is urgent. This is... Uh, well, I appreciate that you started with an apology. Am I getting reimbursed for gas? Yes, you, this will be... Um, I, you know, have been working... We This will be beneficial to your career. Uh, if if uh, You say that, but you set up a hospital in a fucking storage shed last time we spoke. Yes, for uh, security reasons. For security reasons, of course. Because the you store it was the most secure location. It was. Uh, no one no one found out about it. Uh, and you... Has anyone say... ever told you that you're fucking insufferable? Yes, but it uh, it gets the job done, all right? We need, we need your help, and uh, we will... You 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 will get that next assignment that you've been looking at. I I, I I do know you've been looking at postings and have made your indications of which one you'd want the most. Um, and I, I can make that happen. If you I am know. not being posted at a U-Haul. I'm talking about your day job. <sighs> the, you can't even take a fucking joke. You know what? Fine. I'll be there. Have the reimbursement ready or I will try to punch you again. All right. Thank you. Um, so you hang up um, and make your make your way to Sacramento. And uh, next up, we have Agent Sev March. Tell us about Agent March. What does uh, she look like and what kind of background does she have? So Agent Sev March uh, used to be involved in, I assume, the United States military because we're yeah. in, uh, in the United States. Yeah, say uh, U.S. Army. Yeah. So these days, um, she wears a suit and tie. She doesn't wear it particularly well. It looks a little bit more like it's wearing her. She smokes a lot. She drinks when she has the occasion. Because when she was part of the army, she was part of a, a test group um, that dealt with some supernatural affairs. The idea was to create a military force that was incapable of suffering casualties, right? Because at around 10% casualties, a group of soldiers will rout. And at 17% casualties, they're completely broken and you can't use them anymore for anything, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's guaranteed to have PTSD at that point or be so severely injured that you send them back home. You're 
spending a lot of government money to ensure their health care, rehabilitate them to work in society. And it's also really, really bad for optics. Like, that's how you get worse. Sure it is. That's how, that's how people be like, hmm, maybe this forever war is maybe not a good thing. So mm-hmm. a unit that can't suffer casualties would be great. So she was involved in an operation called the Labor of Dogs. And it was to test a ritual that, surprisingly enough, had efficacious effects. Like, you could take anyone, and as long as they weren't dead, if they were one step away from death's door, you could instantly heal all of their injuries, and they'd be fine. The problem is, when you have a unit that suffers 100% casualties, and then 200% casualties, and then 4,000% casualties, emotionally... (laughs) they no longer become capable of performing tasks. Mm -hmm. So that's what she was up to before this. So Agent March, you know that that experiment was run through a company, a front company called that was connected to some other company called March technologies. Yeah. So, uh, well, I imagine it ended badly, but, uh, obviously you made it out intact. Uh, yeah. Seeing some shit. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Blue and people together every day. Yeah, so since then, you've been in part of this nebulous network of people in the U.S. military industrial complex that know that something that there are things, reality is not what is advertised. There there are things um, that we just don't understand. And uh, there is a large group of them that want to keep the lid on this kind of thing. Uh, You were paid as a private security contractor uh, kind of like a, a, with your medical skills, um, you know, to stay on, b- provide sight. Your day job is rather boring, but occasionally you get called up to uh, go deal with something. You you are uh, called. You are somewhere in California, and you 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 uh, get the call, and you know it's sent through an ac- appropriate encrypted message. Uh, you you hear a man's voice. Hello, this is my name is Michael Kincaid. Uh, I'll be your case officer for this. Uh, you need to come. This address in Sacramento for a briefing uh, to take place in uh, Yosemite National Park uh, immediately after the briefing. I'll provide all the details there, but we we need your medical expertise and, uh, well, field experience, uh, Agent March. So, yeah, you get the call. Do I have to drive a car? You can fly. uh, It's up to you whether it's close enough for you to drive or if you have to grab a plane to get to Sacramento. So yeah, which, but once once I hit the ground in Sacramento, do I have to drive a car? Uh, there they will have it. One of you will have to drive a car. He he will have a rented via, uh, uh, an SUV for the three of you. Um, okay, but you don't have to be the driver if you don't want to. Like one of them can drive. Okay, I accept <laughs> you your know. terms. All right, you begin to grab your go bag uh, and uh, head out. And finally, we have Winter, who is playing. Are you keeping the name? Uh, I'm just keeping the name. All right. Jane Worley, tell us about Jane. She is a Fish and Wildlife Service special agent. She's been she's been in a lot of places in the country, working on various special projects. And on one of those, she maybe saw some things she oughtn't have. And uh, maybe a little shakier than she used to be. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the, the Fish and Wildlife Service actually is a, you know, federal agency that investigates crimes related, mm-hmm. related to, you know, wildlife, especially like mm-hmm. people who poach animals, people who traffic in animal parts. And you had some guys under surveillance in the woods one mm-hmm. night and uh, you thought that there was a weird looking tree in the, the forest and then the tree moved and mm-hmm. then it ate them, for lack of a better term. And Yeah, it wasn't a pretty sight. And I am not proud to say that I just blessed. Yeah. Uh, well, that's why you're still alive. But uh, you, you, you said enough to a supervisor yeah. that uh, uh, you were approached and told that there are th- there are things like that out there. And wouldn't you like to do something about them? And we can help. Oh, sure. Would I? So. I think right now, given the 4th of July weekend, she is on vacation with her girlfriend in Southern California. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, you get the call. And you you know the 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 routine. You know that it's coming from the the organization. You answer and it's like, "Hello, uh, my name is Michael Kincaid. Uh, I'm going to be your case officer for uh, an operation. Uh, you need to meet me at Sacramento uh, tomorrow morning uh, at this address uh, in order to 
get your briefing. It'll take place in Yosemite National Park. Uh, so bring appropriate equipment. Uh, it should only take pl- take one or two days at most, uh, but you need to leave uh, immediately. And uh, yeah, this your expertise in particular Oof. will be valuable. Of course, it's on my vacation. All right. Yeah. Uh, what kind of excuse do you make to your girlfriend? I'm, I'm just going to be fairly honest that work called and it's an emergency and I have to. Does this happen have to a skip lot? out on our plans? Uh, yeah, I think it does. <laughs> she and I don't think it's a good thing. No, uh, your girlfriend certainly does not think it is a good thing. She is, uh, but she's gotten better at hiding her disappointment. Um, oh, oh no, she's not. You, your human is ten. Go ahead and give me a human roll. Oof. Oh, I'm just gonna use that roll I told you I was gonna use, which is a ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh. She, Oh, she's she's so proud of you. Uh, you're definitely doing the right thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, yep. This definitely is not a failing relationship. You're Everything's going great. Right, you're making the right choice. Um, making the right career decisions. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were just talking about losing girlfriends or coming back from missions. Yeah. Weird. Weird that that would be the case. Amazing. So, um, yeah, but both Agent Worley and Agent uh, March, uh, because they've seen some shit in the field, they they can bring more in. Worley, uh, yeah, you, you, you've you uh, invested in a Barrett uh, 50 caliber rifle and uh, mm-hmm. quite a bit of ammunition for it. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's <laughs> this thing will uh, you, you, you told your girlfriend, well, uh, was it for target shooting or for bears? Uh Oh, she doesn't know about that. Okay, so yeah, you you swing by the storage unit to grab that on your way. <laughs> and, yep. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Agent March, you you have a uh, Kevlar armor and an illegally modified uh, assault rifle uh, that can fire bursts. So yeah, I think she's uh, I think she's just got a under under her jacket. She's just got a a ceramic vest. Yeah. So that'll provide a lot of protection in the field and um, agent uh, March also. Yeah. So um, the three of you. Um, Does Lydia have, not have anything? Uh, Lydia, you do have a handgun. Or and, key, agent key. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, agent key. Um, you do have your handgun. Uh, you bring that with you at all times now. Um, but True. yeah. You, yeah. You, you, you spent a lot of time on the range. You were. But you're not like from a military background. That's uh, true. I am or not a law enforcement background. So, oh, by the way, you also have uh, three points and unnatural now from your exposure Sweet. to the um, the thing in the septic tank. So you, uh, yeah, was there? I mean, I guess you could get bring additional equipment. Like, what kind of what would be I was just you curious. Would your go back. Yeah, um, I, I like I like the idea that she just does not go anywhere without her service issue pistol. Uh, well, it's not service issue. It's definitely your own. But you, you've sure. uh, Delta Green. Uh, they, they have some. Uh, they're able to get you a. Uh, 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 well, actually, you can't carry it on plane, but you can carry and check luggage. So yeah, you, you. Sweet. Yeah, they they uh, even offer you a gun that doesn't have. Uh, that can't be traced to you if you want one. Oh hell yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So yeah, you have a handgun that's not registered to anyone. So yeah, you can just throw that in the lake anytime you're done using it. Um, I love that. Yeah. Good for so, me. Yeah. But yeah, if there was something else, some sort of piece of civilian gear that you would bring with you at all times, you could bring that. I mean, uh, uh, voice recorder. Voice recorder. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, you all have flashlights, uh, weather appropriate weather gear uh, or clothing, boots and that kind of thing. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we cut to Sacramento the next day. It's an anonymous office in a... Uh, um, you know, office park that you were, uh, Michael, uh, Kincaid was waiting at the door to let you in. Uh, it has a key card access. Normally, uh, he leads you into a windowless or into a, uh, conference room. Uh, there's probably says this is, I apologize for the short notice. Uh, but this is a very time sensitive operation. Uh, this is, uh, we, we go with the, uh, operation fulminate, uh, as the code name for this operation. You uh, must go to Ranchera Falls Trailhead Ranger Station uh, in the Hetch Hetchy region of Yosemite National Park. I will provide a map. It's about a three and a half hour drive. I've already secured a rented SUV in um, a front company's name, so that cannot be traced to you if you lose the SUV uh, for whatever reason. 
And you are to investigate the unexpected recovery of a six-year-old child who was found wandering naked in a field by a ranger early Saturday, yesterday, you know, yesterday morning. Um, the child identified himself as Brandon McGill of Topeka, Kansas, and asked to call his parents. After a brief conversation, the parents were beside themselves with confusion and tearful excitement and said they would depart for Yosemite immediately. They are they arrived this morning at 6.30 a.m. And the supervising park ranger contacted the FBI. Uh, he texted photos of Brandon McGill, which matched him with earlier photos. And this is what much it. earlier. Yes. Uh, 19 Brandon McGill disappeared from that region in 1980 at Aww. six years old. And uh, mm. you're he, giving us actual information this time, Kincaid. Yes, I will. I, I, that, I gave you all the information I had available last time. Horse shit. Right. But uh, that's that's so nice. Yes. I uh, are you flirting with me? No, I really do want you all to do the you, you understand i i really do want you to succeed i i do i don't do this out of because there is a kid who has been gone for 40 years and or he should be over 40 right now and uh, -huh. uh he still looks uh identical to when he disappeared um, i don't actually believe you give a rat's ass about us given what mission you sent me on with the customs officer and the environmental scientist last time um that's very nice of you thank you continue uh, yes. Um, the, um, I we have, have yes. Is she going to be like this the whole time? Yes. Hi, I'm agent key. I was pulled on for a mission, uh, several weeks ago by this asshole who didn't tell me that members of our organization were necrotizing their wives. Well, that was from the previous iteration of this organization. We did, we lost records. We did not keep track of them back, you know, well, Hey. We, we we were better at record keeping it. Record keeping. And Steph now. Marsh, sorry to hear about that. So we have a um, there's an FBI agent uh, embedded with us uh, in San Francisco who found out about this uh, and has been delaying a response. I have been working with her to come up with a cover story in that there is an interagency task, a multi agency task force investigating human trafficking. Uh, in this case, Agent Worley here would be the lead. Uh, because it takes place in national parks. Uh, Lydia, you would be there as a translator, f just in case. Sure. And um, Agent March would be there to provide security. That is your cover story. Uh, that is the best I could do. And uh, the FBI, uh, thanks to Agent Sands and the FBI, we are we're delaying official response. But you need to locate the child, see if it is actually Brandon McGill, determine what if there's an unnatural threat in the area, Remove the a natural threat if there is one, uh, and whatever make whatever outcome happens entirely mundane. Once you figure out what to do with the kid, we can take it and hand it off to another agency. Or if it is the kid and they they have no memory, I you know whatever your assessment of what happens to the kid is what we'll do. But uh, we a kid who's been missing for decades and appears to be the exact same age, plus this uh, region does uh have uh i've done some initial research uh and there does seem to be a history of people disappearing in this region in this particular park in this very very specialized area so um this could be part of a larger pattern uh you can you you have three and a half hours uh of a, a car ride to get there uh try and beat the parents just yeah make an assessment find out what's going on but uh, that that is all. Uh, uh, yeah, this is this is last minute. You three were geographically the closest to uh, field agents. So, um, are there any other other questions? It's okay. I didn't want to work with you either. I understand. So, uh, but yeah, there, there there are some people who um, we don't know what that if it, if it even is it a child or if it's something pretending to be a child or if it's a child that's just experienced missing time. We don't know. And um, that's your job is to find out. So, Great. Uh, yeah. Well, I drove last time. So if y'all want to get in the SUV, Kincaid, are you coming? All right. Um, oh, also here is I have put a paramedic bag, food, water, flashlights, and a satellite phone with my uh, number. And I will stay up, respond as quickly as I can now. I did get, according to weather reports, a storm is moving in the area. Good luck. Wait, did so. you offer to drive Agent March? Or was that? No, that was uh... no, that was me. 
Oh, I apologize. Yeah. So, yeah, the three of you get in, load your go bags into the vehicle. Um, yeah, you do. It is about a three and a half hour uh, trip. Um, there is, uh, I can give you a another map if you want. So uh, if you look in the One Shots channel, uh, there are a couple maps to look at of the, the same era. And this is, this is an actual place. You can just look it up on the Google if you want to. Tweet. Uh, yeah. And so you were just outside city limits of Sacramento. And so you just mm -hmm. jump on the highway and head that way. So Agent Worley is driving. Um, you can talk, you can plan, uh, or people with the other two agents, you have phones, uh, probably a laptop. So you could do other, uh, some history or bureaucracy or, uh, a cult, uh, to gain information. Cool. So, uh, agent yeah. key. Yeah. Translation, huh? Well, clearly they need me if the child comes back speaking Cantonese. Oh, I just meant like, you know, what do you do for your day job? Cause, uh, uh, department of state. Oh uh, yeah. I got yeah. a, I got a sister that's like a diplomat aide or whatever. Oh so, yeah. An attache. Yeah. 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 I think, I mean, we're not super close after the last, um, you know, whatever, but yeah, it's really interesting that. stuff. Um, also I'm mostly like that with King Cade. Um, I'll try not to be an asshole with you guys unless you're an asshole to me, because, like, you know. I do appreciate that. I, really I, I work in diplomacy. I like to pride myself on actually talking to people sometimes. <laughs> I keep that in mind. If we find the kid, um, that's all yours. Yeah, I have some ideas. Um, mm -hmm. If they want to lean into the human trafficking angle, that's definitely, like, the most sensationalist angle and the one that's going to get the most eyeballs on it and make people stop considering anything else. Um, we can be like, oh, yeah, you know, his his ancestor or his father or would be father at this point because he'd be 46. Uh, got kidnapped and, like, told his kids stories of what his life was like so like if they ever if the kid ever managed to escape you know that's right. it, that's my rough outline that i'm working with right now uh, you know, there's a lot of like um communes and stuff out in the middle of nowhere that mm -hmm. brainwash people and all that kind of stuff that's a good point it's california i'm sure we could find some, <laughs> something close by oh yeah 100 percent. so what mm -hmm. do you do Oh, me? Um, mm -hmm. This, mostly. Congratulations? It's, um, uh, you know, it is what it is. It ain't much, but it's terrifying work. <laughs> right. I think you just get a laugh uh, from the driver's seat. Yeah. What do you, uh, what do you do? Uh, Fish and Wildlife Service. So. Lots of people doing shit they shouldn't in a federal park. Agent Key points out the window to a starling murmuration. How's the wildlife? Is that illegal? Uh, if I don't see it, it's not my problem. Oh, so have okay. you seen the corpse god? The, the what? what? <laughs> Excuse corpse me? God, it's like a... It's like a big deer. It's got a bunch of meat, but you haven't seen the corpse god? I haven't seen the corpse god. Oh, uh, well. What did we just say? If I haven't seen it, it's not my problem? Uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think, um, yeah. I think that's pretty... I it's not your problem. Yeah? Yeah, no. both of you did see uh, Agent Worley load in a very lo long uh, black case. Uh, mm -hmm. for a big oh, okay. Rifle. Yeah. Great. Among some other... Amazing. Actual, like, outdoors equipment. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, my brain is heavily farting right now. Um, so it's Agent March and Agent Worley, correct? Yes. Uh, I high-five Agent March because we've never seen the Corpse God. <laughs> oh, I've seen the Corpse God. Agent Worley hasn't. Oh yes. my god, I'm gonna... Okay, I'm so sorry. Let me just... I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just... high-five Agent Worley because we haven't seen the Corpse God. Is it Worley like that, Agent Worley? Worley, I think. Yeah. Worley, yeah. Um, so, oh, hold yeah. on. Can we get? Can I get just a quick recap? Agent Worley is driving, and Agent March is in the yes. back seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, yes. cool. And uh, I I can I can either be in the back seat making peanut gallery sounds or I can be in the the passenger seat. Either one's fine. <laughs> Uh, we'll we'll say you're in the uh, in shotgun. Um, okay, cool. And uh, yeah, so the 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 three of you drive on. Um, yeah, I would. I yeah. would love to make a hist. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I think I am probably Just... driving fairly recklessly. All right. Yeah, we need to beat the storm. Mm-hmm. Right, and the parents. Me. Yeah. Yeah. Honey, there's right. a big storm coming. Uh, do you so? Yeah, Agent uh, Key, uh, go ahead and give me a history check. Hell yeah, I'm gonna do a history check on communes in the area. Okay. Boom, boom. Let's see if I let's see if I remember if I have any history. I do. I have a forty in history. Let's roll it. Okay. I literally just barely fail. Okay. I got a forty-one. Um, you don't find anything about communes, but the, this history, this area does have a history of weirdness. Uh, like I said. Um, even on a fail check, you would find out, uh, information about Brandon McGill's di- disappearance because it made the news. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were searches, including one with over a hundred personnel and two helicopters. Ooh. Um, he, yeah, you don't get all the details of it, but, um, the FBI became involved after an eyewitness claimed to have seen a man in black clothing following the McGill's down the trail. Oh, two boy. independent witnesses volunteered this information. One described the man as tall and pale. Uh, the other described it only as a figure in black. Yeah, so, and there's also a lot of dis- children disappearing in this park. Um, yeah. Can I, can yeah, I make a over shot the in the dark mm-hmm. on a natural roll? Um, yeah. See if I've, I've heard of, of what that thing is. Oh, no, like my two? Nice. Okay. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, with a two, there, there are. Um, a a lot of uh, possible suspects without information. There's not a lot to go on, but you can think of uh, things you've heard whispered of of, of several in- types of entities uh, that are experts at hiding in the forest and preying on uh, travelers and hikers and that kind of thing. In particular, um, there would be. Uh, so I, I'll keep that in mind. If you get information, you'll be able to corroborate that. So. Um, I got a short list. Yeah, yeah, you have a short list, but if you get like a name from something or a symbol uh, or something like that, you I'll I'll let you use that success on that. Um, Okay, I'll hold on to it. Yeah, Lydia's uh, sorry, Agent Key is just going to start looking up Slenderman Um, and instances of Slenderman (laughs) in Yosemite. Well, this uh, predates. uh, I mean, this this all Slenderman is only a couple years old. Yeah, Uh, she's still going to look it up. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, th- this, this goes back, uh, decades, uh, 24 children have vanished in Yosemite, Yosemite over the last 40 years there. Yeah. Yeah. You can give me an occult check. Cool. And so can you agent March, if you want to look into it. Okay. Um, I get a 16. So, okay. So, uh, I fail. Okay, uh, so Agent March, you pick up some similarities of all these disappearances. Bad weather follows disappearances. Uh, the same thing. Uh, so there, there's there's a pattern. Uh, there's uh, dogs could not find any scent of uh, Brandon McGill. And then when lost children are found in general, it is often miles from where they were lost. So they usually have to do a large search radius. But uh, obviously, the, there's you know, 24 kids that are, that are just entirely missing. Um, those that are recovered have high temperatures and are withdrawn and disoriented. Uh, the disappearances always, almost always occur late afternoon or early dusk. Brandon McGill vanished at 4.33 p.m. Uh, and the disappearances tend to occur in o- areas overgrown with huckleberries. Uh, the devil's chair, uh, marked on your map, is an area covered in huckleberry bushes. So... All right, well, I've got good news and bad news. All right. So the bad news is, um, what was the dude's name, Kincaid? Yeah. Uh, the handler, yeah. Um, the bad news is Kincaid has sent us on kind of a goose chase. Wow, um, I looked really? up all the disappearances, and there's not going to be any tracks. We're going to be hit by an awful storm, and the search radius is going to be so big that we may not have even bothered. Uh, but I do have one lead. Um, all right. Places with huckleberries 
uh, it's been a while since I've done any kind of recreation, so I'm going to hope that our fish and game wildlife officer knows what a huckleberry yeah, is. Yeah, I can. Yeah. I, it concerns me that what you said was, it's been a while since I've done any recreation. Are you okay? Are any of us? I mean, I like to think I'm relatively okay. I'm just bitchy to Kincaid. Well, that's that's good, though, right? <laughs> I mean, that's human contact, a nice relationship. You remember Is each it? other's names. I like to think I'm pretty okay. That's good. Right, you're, you're scaring Staring me. Staring into okay. the middle distance. I smoke? No, go ahead. Oh, I was about to ask. Uh, I don't smoke, just roll down the windows. Hell yeah. Sorry, it really is a terrible habit. I know I should stop. You know that that'll kill you someday. I hope so. Uh, here's some right about the devil's chair. By the way, it is a, a real place. And, um, yeah, <laughs> a hilly, mountainous, you know, arid region. Um, so yeah, the this is you know late summer, uh, midsummer. So it is quite hot and dry uh, this year. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, so you you spend the hours uh, driving, uh, talking, getting to know each other a little better. There are a lot of you know. You, you look into the. There are legends of. Uh, yeah, did anybody make an occult? Uh, you made the occult check, right? So yeah, um, I made the occult check. Yeah, there is some more information uh, about. Uh, you do hear uh, were some some information about like. Uh, legends of of giants uh, of uh, you know obviously like Bigfoot or like there there's just reports of the these kind of things being linked uh, to a degree that like when a child disappears people often see these kind of mysterious figures uh, in the area yeah there's not a lot uh, known about them there's a lot of theories about them obviously. Uh, but and then there's know, a, the, a big yeah. storm rolls through and nobody can find anything. Yeah. So the right. kid, the, the, the thing is different about this case is that the kid has been found after such a long period of time and he's the same age. Um, so, so, yeah. so whoever picked him up, are they just waiting at the trailhead? Yeah. Um, they, uh, according to the, um, the Rangers at the station, uh, at the park, uh, called the FBI and then the FBI slowed everything down to get Delta green involved uh, to get you involved. And, um, so they're keeping the kid at the station, uh, cause he was only found yesterday. Okay. And yeah, you just have to assess the kid and see if there's a threat in the area. So, all right. So probably talk to the kid and do a little bit of a hike. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. not bad. It could be worse. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, uh, three of you pull in, uh, as you know, you thunder rumbles in the distance. It is hmm. heavily overcast. Um, it is going to rain any moment, um, maybe an hour, maybe a minute. Uh, but it is definitely it. It's you can you can all smell the storm in the air, you know. But the uh, you look around, uh, to Agent uh, Worley. It is uh, you see California bl black oak, ponderosa pine, cedar, and white fir, uh, and some occasional giant sequoia trees. Um, the area has exposed rock faces, dirt, and scrub grasses, which seem very desert-like in the summer. Uh, small bushes cluster mm -hmm. next to the trees. Oregon grape, coffee, Sierra coffee berry, gooseberry, and pygmy rose. There are large open areas with only low shrubs, often screened by larger windbreak providing trees. Uh, it is hard to it would be hard to spot a person in the distance uh, in this kind of cover. Um, but there is a parking lot uh, by the trailhead station um, and a the trailhead station is actually a very large building. Two stories, you can see um, there's some couple backpackers going in and out. There's a couple, you know, Jeeps, quad runners uh, parked there. And uh, yeah, uh, that this is sort of uh, you can tell there's some backpackers in for the weekend, some a park ranger going inside the station as you're as you're pulling up. Um, so yeah, or yeah, but yeah, what is your, uh, I would assume your game plan is simply march in and hello, we're here to, from the government. We're here to help. Uh, but you don't have to, uh, that is, that is up to you. I didn't have any other plans. That was my unless plan. someone else does. Yeah, yeah. So you go in there, um, you 
at the front. You 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 talk to a uh, park ranger. Uh, let's see here, Galagos. You know, she says, "Oh, hi. I'm. Uh, you just call me Tamika. Uh, how, how can I help you all?" Uh, I'm Agent Worley with the Fish and Wildlife Service. We're here about the kid. Oh yeah, I just got a message from uh, the FBI saying that there's some sort of uh, task force about this kind of thing, which I, mm-hmm. I not, we'd not heard anything about that. Yeah, uh, let me let me get my boss. Uh, uh, hey, Doug, a, you know, heavily uh, tan guy walks in, you know, they're wearing the park ranger uh, uniform, uh, obviously spends a ton of time outdoors. He's like, Hi, I'm uh, Ranger uh, Kina. Uh, I'm in charge of the station. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, we're, we're just waiting for the parents. Uh, apparently they're on their way, but they, uh, got a call saying they were delayed by something. Uh, I don't think they're going to be able to make it tonight. The, I mean, the rain, I think we've already, we already closed off the road, uh, just are warning people about coming in at this point. Cause you got this looks like there's going to be a big storm. You might, you might, I hope you all are comfortable bunking out here for the night because i don't think you're gonna get, make it back to any hotel or anything yeah um certainly about not that i think this oh, i've got some uh information from my friend out of the weather service that it's going to be a little bit bigger than that is it possible yeah. if you can start sending people home like a little bit stronger than just discouraging oh I, I mean it'll be a bad storm but it's not as long as the dam doesn't <laughs> you know and the dam's fine like, uh, um, we're, we're not gonna have anything to worry about it. It'll, it'll be wet and, you know, they can come into the, we got, we got room for everybody here, but we've probably got a couple dozen, you know, uh, hikers back here. What do you, what, what do you think to Oh, like 30? Oh no, it's probably closer to 40, but anyways, they're, they're just scattered around there. You don't have to worry about them. Uh, we haven't told, we are not exactly advertising, you know, brand Brandon's little, uh, appearance to them. So he, he's, he's off, you know, where we're keeping an eye on the poor boy. Um, yeah, well, a lot of people were going to have to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, that they're scattered around the entire park or this, this region of the park. So there may not. Yeah. What are they going to fine. see? Yeah. So I don't uh, know, Ross, what are yeah. they going to see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, maybe some nice lightning. You know. Yeah. So the maybe uh, some birds. Yeah. So it sounds like Lots of water. Uh, can we uh, have? Um, yeah. yeah. Can we have Agent Key go talk to the kid, and then um, we'll go talk to the FBI agent. Works well, the FBI me. agents in San Francisco, but uh, you could talk to the. Oh, I thought that I thought there was a guy on site. No, they just been calling in to to run interference for you. Um, oh, okay. Who, yeah, but uh, Agent Tamika said, "Yeah, I found the kid. Uh, if you need to, uh, uh, a statement. Um, so." Yeah, um, the but yeah, so Agent Key, you you were led into a uh, small into a room that has some you know toys and a little plastic chair. That's obviously uh, meant as kind of a you know daycare kind of room for mm-hmm. kids uh, that are that are are basically a place to keep kids that are lost. Uh, this kind of keeps happening, right? In, in the in the park, weird, yeah, wild how that happens. Um, yeah, he, uh, you can give me a human check. Sure. I have 60 in human and I rolled a 39. Okay. Yeah. He uh, phys- physically looks like a normal boy, you know, around six years old, but like he, he is just idly fiddling with a little plastic toy. His eyes are downcast. He's very quiet. He is very withdrawn. Uh, so whatever happened to him was something. Yeah. He's still processing something that has happened to him. Um, but there, Same there's, buddy. yeah, yeah. He, he, he doesn't say anything as you, as you come in. So, Hey bud. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Lydia. What's yours? Brandon. Yeah. You know, I heard about a really famous kid named Brandon. Okay. Yeah? Do you know this story? No. No, there was, see, there was, th- there was this kid named Brandon, and everybody loved him, and then he disappeared. Can you believe that? Oh. And nobody ever gave up hope looking for him. Everyone oh. just kept looking for him, and his mommy and daddy were really, really worried about him, 
And then one day he, sh- he came back. And they weren't expecting that. Because, see, Brandon had been gone for a long time. Okay. Uh, you can roll Persuade with a plus 20 bonus. Sweet. Thanks. Uh, my Persuasion is 44. And I rolled a 42. So there we go. Okay. Uh, so, well, with a, six, with a plus 20 bonus, it's 64. So I yeah. rolled a 42. So it takes you a while, but you, he kind of... Uh, you 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 can tell that he is more comfortable around you. Uh, so mm-hmm. this, this will take some time. So you can think about like what you want to do with that. Like, do you want to ask him questions? Do you just kind of want to assess him? Um, um, I'm starting yeah. off. I'm starting off by assessing him. Okay. Um, what I really want is for him to start telling me what happened of his own accord. I want him to think it's his idea. Okay. All right. So- like. Giving yeah. kids agency in this situ in situations like this is really, really imperative, and a lot of adults don't do that. Yeah, um, so, yeah, though that's true. Uh, give me an alertness check. Cool. Um, so my alertness is. Do I have any alertness? I think I do. Yes, I have I an have alertness. Never seen Delta Green send someone this competent. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got a fifteen. All right, yeah, with a 15, um, you do spot something. He's kind of leaned over, and he has, you see a green symbol on the back of his neck. And is it a triangle? It is a square. Uh, oh. With like what looks like a stylized ram's head. Oh, God, not Delta Rhombus, my arch nemesis. Um, it's. No? I love okay. handouts. Oh, handouts. Uh-huh. Yeah. I- I made so, a funny Delta Rhombus joke. No, I, I know. Oh, huh. I'm so but, sad. Okay. Um, that is an approximation of what it looks like. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's awful. Tattooed onto the back of his neck. Hey, bud. Um, I can I can I can I get you to hold your head forward a little further for me? You got you, so he does. Yeah. You got something on the back of your neck here. Mm-hmm. Can I look at it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I'm asking him. Oh, he just okay. All right, I'm gonna take a picture of it with my phone and send it to Kincaid. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do any of you have archaeology? I don't. Mm-hmm. No, but I do. I have nope. been hanging on to that uh, unnatural rule. Yeah. Uh. Well, this is not. Uh, yeah, you could use that if you want to. So yeah, you yeah. So Adrian March, you actually recognize that is being very similar to an uh, in terms of it. It's uh, it reminds you of the Aztec like symbols, like their language um, for and you you actually identify that as the character for boy. It's not identical, it's but it's like very similar. So it's, it's kind of like he's just been labeled. Yes. OK, I'm going to I'm going to text that back to uh, to Agent Key. Yeah. Don't like that at all. Oh, uh, boy. Well, this- this takes you a little while to do. So, um, Agent Worley, was there anything you wanted to do uh, while Key is interviewing uh, Brandon? I was just basically just going to ask all of the very intricate details from um, Tamika. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. She tells you. And just go over it several yeah, I, times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She uh, was... I was patrolling uh, the Huckleberry field near uh, the reservoir. It's, you know, probably half a mile from devil's chair. She, I was uh, just looking for garbage, really just, you know, kind of a basic thing. He was coherent. He was very dirty, like just, just covered in dirt uh, and and naked. Um, and so I covered him up. He said his name was Brandon McGill. He wanted to know where his parents were. I'd never heard of that. We, we you know, I remember every kid who goes missing in our park, and this obviously didn't happen on my watch. Um, is it local dirt? Yeah, it was like, um, yeah, but like, un, like, um, we had a couple of small caves that reminded me of that. Like, uh, yeah, cave dirt, uh, really. Cave dirt. L- little, little, little different uh, than the surface. Um, if I got you a map, could you mark the caves on it for me? I was about to ask the same thing. Yeah, they're they're not very big, uh, but yeah, there there are. Let's see here. Do, can people go into them? Like, do you do tours? I mean, I know uh, some of them you can. Some of them you can't. 
Yeah, so let's see here. There are none nearby. Uh, none in the immediate vicinity, but like Yosemite's big, right? Like, yeah, lot, are there yeah. any near um, Devil's Chair? No, not that I know of, but I mean, maybe we missed something. So uh, I took him to the station. You know, he didn't recognize my cell phone. Uh, I, I, but you know, he, we, we got on, I figured out where, what his parents' phone number were. They hadn't changed it in apparently all this time, landline, uh, people. And yeah, they, they were back home in, in Kansas and they were shocked. Uh, and I remember the call. They were just, you could hear a pin drop when, when they heard his voice and then like, they were just screaming and crying and like. Uh, they just overwhelming. I can't. I can't imagine. And they, 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 they uh, should be here to. Well, probably not tonight because of the weather, but definitely tomorrow morning. Um, uh, I, I'm gonna text Agent Key. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, so if when you're talking to to Brandon, it'd be cool if you could um try and establish like if he really is from 40 years ago, like asking what his favorite movie is, who his yeah. favorite Disney characters are. That is a brilliant idea. I will absolutely do that. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that you don't have to roll for you. You've established his trust and he's happy to talk. I mean, it's not <laughs> the thing that's obviously scaring him. So yeah, he, he's, uh, happy, he, more easily able to talk about those things. So yeah, he went missing in 1980. So it was, uh, most popular child's movie of 1980. <laughs> probably I, I i don't know if et was out yet or not probably not um hold on i'm gonna do some quick uh, googling yeah so uh but yeah his his pop culture references are entirely appropriate for someone from 1980 yeah and uh you made your human check he is being totally truthful and knows about as much as a six-year-old would about those things uh yet at the appropriate so yeah yeah, he's um, probably he's probably gonna be like probably just have seen Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. So Remember that's exciting. Time. So yeah, you can yeah, this is extremely um, I'll talk to him about Luke Skywalker. Fuck. Yeah. Uh well no, I mean Lydia, this is this is like you could not coach a kid to do this. Like, yeah. Unless you totally immerse mm -hmm. them, unless you were right. Unless you had cut them out from the world and like, oh, put them in a bubble. And that was all they knew that, that like, you can't fake this level of sincerity. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it's, so this takes a while, uh, you know, another like half an hour. So you've been talking to the kid about an hour mm -hmm. uh, and he's getting a little tired. Uh, cause this is still a lot apparently for him. Uh, yeah. Tamika, uh, tells you that, you know, since then we've kept the kid here. Uh, we made sure there's always people there with him. You know that he trusted. He trusts. He likes me. He likes everybody at the station, but he's very quiet. Um, yeah, that but, makes sense. Um, you were just keeping a little things, waiting for his parents or I guess you to show up. Uh, ca to care to tell me what this is about? Like, what's the deal with this kid? So the the uh, Tamika's asking you, Agent Worley. Mm -hmm. Um. So you can give me an in times five check if you want to have an idea of like, yeah, OK. Do we want to just go with the story that we think there's a uh, like a cult commune? Oh, yeah. yeah. Nearby. This yeah, that's okay. a good idea. It's, yeah. It's All right. One, yeah, you... that might actually be possible, but uh, mm -hmm. two, it, it's easy to explain. Yeah. So you worked out some uh, on your car right over. You worked out some details yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you kind of like we did, we're not sure we're you're hedging your bets a lot, but mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. there is this group and they're doing this stuff and they're making the kids think they're you know someone else. We don't know why, and you know it's really weird. But yeah, yeah so you're already kind of seeding the doubt uh, in the in there or like uh, giving a plausible uh, uh, story mm -hmm. or how could this happen? And uh, that's when the the first you know thunder and lightning like hits the area like. Uh, it's a window rattling thunder uh, and very bright lightning. So, yeah, you, you were uh, uh, at this point, uh, a backpacker comes in, uh, an older woman. Uh, she she is, you know, wearing a raincoat. It's like, whoo, boy. Um, hey, uh, Tamika, um, you know, I don't want to alarm you, but I, 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 I <sighs> she just goes over to Tamika and sort of like 
whispering to her because, you know, uh, so Whirly and and March, you're, you're kind of hovering between the interview room and, and, and the rest of the station. So you can kind of see this as well. Key, you're still talking to the kid. Um, um, it, yeah. But yeah, she's how ta- this old woman, this backpacker is telling something to Tamika. Uh, you can make alertness check to eavesdrop uh, without being noticed. Or yeah, you could just budge in if you want to. I will make an alertness check. Mm-hmm. But it's a 21 out of 50. Okay. With that, I saw someone. She, This old woman's like, I don't want to alarm anybody, but I saw someone weird uh out in the, in the trees uh watching watching us in the distance it, big big guy really tall he's just walking around watching us and i felt really uneasy and no and and you know my my husband didn't notice but like i could sure as hell see him and yeah i just thought you should know and i don't think he was wearing anything it's hard to tell but like maybe he's wearing something like a like, right? I don't know. He maybe he was just really pale. I don't know. It was it was just weird. It was disconcerting. So and Tamika's like, okay, thank you, thank you for your report. Um, we'll we'll uh uh if we'll we'll keep an eye out, and uh if you feel unsafe, you can come back here, okay? And she's like, all right, all right, but don't worry, we got we got we got we got our bear spray. We'll be fine. She goes back out into the storm. Uh, I I will stop her. Okay. Oh. Hello, uh, ma'am. I'm I'm Agent Worley with uh, Fish and Wildlife. Do you think you could point out where you saw that man? Oh, sure. Yeah. She describes a place uh, that she says is not too far from here. You can give me a navigate or a survival check to understand the old lady's. Actually, I mean, right. she's like about 60. Her vague instructions uh, based on that tree over there. Yeah. Uh, 25 yeah. for navigate, which is 60. Right. Okay. So she describes like an area south of Devil's Chair, but like, yeah, somewhere between, if you look at the first handle, between Devil's Chair and the Backpackers Campground, somewhere in that area. Uh, yeah. So a couple miles okay. from here. From, um, oh no, the weather's awful. I wouldn't, never mind. I'll, I'll, I'll let March know what I overheard after I let the old woman go. And I'm going to uh, text with that information. I'm going to text uh, Kincaid. Okay. Let him know that since the parents are out, that is a perfect time to go put a monitor on the house. Because if we end up letting that kid go back and there's something that has marked him, there's a potential mm-hmm. that it could go try to look for him. Um, uh, so it would be nice to have an eye in the area. Okay. I will mobilize. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, uh, given yeah that there'll be yeah there's enough time to mobilize someone to uh, do that. Uh, thank you. Uh, that is a good idea. So, yeah, you have you, uh, right now at this point though only the satellite phone works. Uh, the storm is you're already in a remote area. The storm is not playing any favors with cell phone re- uh, right. reception. So, so I'm gonna yeah. huddle up with Worley to try and figure out what we want to hmm. do. So I've got two concerns. Um, yeah. One is I would like to see the parents' reaction to Brandon. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to know if, and Brandon's reaction to them, I want to know if they look seem like they know each other, because um, that's going to yeah. very easily narrow down whether we have a, a copy kid Absolutely. or a B kid. And then the other thing is, um, do we really want to go game hunting? Because I... it sounds like <laughs> something's looking for people. Um, we might not have to go anywhere. Yeah. But, uh, if we're going to go, if we're going to go mucking around, I want to do it before it gets any worse. By the way, yeah, the big absolutely. guns are in the vehicle. I would assume yes. not bringing a bunch of fucking, yeah. Uh, you know, we're not hauling those around. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, at this point, key, you, you get to that point in your interview and you have to, you realize, you know, Brandon needs a little break. You know, talking to an adult for like an hour is a lot. And at the very slow and careful pace you're doing not to like, you know, you know, you know how to how to do this so that the kid doesn't get freaked out, but Mm -hmm. he's still getting overwhelmed by things. So you give him a break, you get, you know, get him some juice and some animal crackers. um, And yeah, you meet up with the other two agents. You all share what you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's mid afternoon, late afternoon at this point. Yeah, I think we should. I think we should go look before the storm gets any worse. I think okay. I should stay with the kid while you do that. I think you should stay with the kid that's, too. Like I that's said, a good I, idea. I want to know 
I want to know if he thinks the parents are his parents, and I want to know if the parents think he's the kid. Okay. Uh, yeah, he stays behind to wait for the parents to show up because uh, they still may be, be able to make it. Um, you don't, you don't know um, exactly where they are. Their their plane landed about twelve thirty. Uh, you did get that from Kincaid. Um, but you know, landing, disembarking, renting a car. And then it's, you know, a three hour, three and a half hour trip. Uh, that's assuming you don't get lost. Are they going to be able to get the, to the final road uh, here? So, yeah, uh, March and uh, Worley, you put on your you know raincoats uh, mm-hmm. upon, and uh, yeah. Well, are you taking uh, the big guns with yeah, you or let's just let's yeah. bring the rifle? OK, I don't uh, want so to. You- uh yeah so marsh you brought an assault rifle yeah modified for burst fire so mm-hmm. uh, you can you can sling you can hide that under a pacho but the barrett is not something that can be no, hit that yeah. will that will stay in the car for now okay the yeah we, we, we've just got the rifle in a case and if anybody asks us we're government agents we can do what we want <laughs> okay yeah. all right um yeah so you you can you can uh, uh sling the rifle um put it in the case uh, and you head out. So, um, yeah, it is storming. Uh, it's not, it's storming pretty bad, but like, uh, not bad enough that it won't, won't hamper navigation checks. Cause you already made one. So ma- give me another navigation check, uh, Wardley, as long as you don't, well, yeah, if you crit fail that, that's one thing. But. It's a 71 out of 60. Okay. So it's a regular fail. So, uh, yeah. you're, you're, you don't find the exact spot she's looking for, but you're in the general area. You can't even, mm-hmm. you know, you have something like the trail, the station has lights. You can, you can see them from a distance. Um, you know, you have um, reservoirs. Also, and them. Yeah, sorry. I'd also like to have um, borrowed some equipment from the uh, ranger station, if that's all right. What kind of equipment? Like big flashlights. Mm-hmm. Um, Light, probably like binoculars, lighting. if they can spare. Mm-hmm. And like yeah, climbing equipment would be yeah. Okay, so the if it's useful in an arranger station, let's just assume we grab like one or two. That's that's yeah, that's yeah. kind of what I was getting at. Yeah, they have tons of flashlights and yeah, light sources. Um, and uh, yeah, the two of you can uh give me alertness checks as you're in the the, the general area. God damn it! This is a fifty nine uh, out of fifty. I got a 33 under 70. Okay. Oh, yeah. Get them. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, you see a very tall, pale figure uh, in the distance, Agent March. Give me, uh, and you made a critical success. That is not just a tall figure. Uh, even in, it, it's dark. It's storming. Um, but you have frames of references. You have rocks. You have trees. That's not like a six foot or a seven foot guy. That's like a nine foot guy. That I fucking is, called it. Uh, wearing nothing but a loincloth and does oh. not look entirely human. Uh, Maybe not. And <laughs> there, there, there is something. Uh, and it is looking. Yeah, it is not looking directly at you yet. It is looking at some backpackers that are camping nearby. Yeah, it hasn't spotted you yet, but yeah. Uh, let's see here. You keep your shit together, uh, but that is a hundred percent not a human. Okay, um, I'm not very stealthy. Uh, I was not, you know, like special forces or nothing. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna point it out to to Agent mm. Worley, and I'm gonna be like, I, th- I think that's our. I hesitate to say guy, but I think that's our guy. Mm. I think you're probably right. Yeah. Uh, well, Agent Worley, give me one more uh, alertness check. O2? Yeah, you see it. And uh, yeah, you also keep your shit together. You are not. You can see it this time. You can see it clearly. It's in it's in view. You 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 wish you had your rifle, but um, but it, it, it is standing up and it is walking towards the other backpackers. Uh, so you're probably about. Uh, you're a good ways off. Uh, you're probably like a couple of football fields, like three, six, you're probably like 600, 600, 700 feet away and behind a little bit of cover. And it, there's a tent 
Um, so imagine three points of a uh, triangle. You're at one corner. The the giant is on one corner, and then their backpackers across from you are the other point of the triangle, and uh, it is heading towards the backpackers' tent. Um, so Agent March, Agent uh, Wardley, are you going to do anything uh, as a reaction to it moving? How are you with that rifle? Oh, there's guns. Uh, firearms. Firearms. Uh, I'm yeah. actually pretty good with this firearm. Uh, you will be shooting a negative 20 because of distance and also lighting conditions. The storm, you know, it's dark. It's storming. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I could I could probably hit it. Uh, but I don't know that it'd, that'd be a good idea. Uh, here's my uh. two worries. Um, one, I don't know that just hitting it is going to be a good idea. I don't know how resistant this thing is going to be, the caliber of, of, of rifle we have. Two, um, people go missing and don't really talk about this thing, so that means either it is very mm-hmm. successful in its hunts, or there is more than one of it. No, I don't think it's noticed us yet. Do you want to just maybe get closer to those campers and see what happens? So, as the two of you are talking, uh, it disappears uh, from view. It just disappears. Uh, it just uh, it walks. It walks into. It walks behind a tree, and then it doesn't. You, you actually God. see it a little bit, but it's like, it, uh, yeah. Give me another alertness check. Oh, fuck. Okay. Sure. Uh, to understand under seventy. Okay. Fifty six out of fifty. Uh. So was that? Sorry. Was that a fail? <laughs> it was a fail. I okay. succeeded. She failed. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It. Agent March, you you think it, it seems to be walking through solid objects, uh, and then disappears fully into cover. But it, that that's the only way you can describe it as because it it you you see bits of it sticking through the brush, but like cool. it's not affecting the brush. The brush isn't being pushed past. It isn't like yeah, it, it's it, like it's not uh, solid. It's just uh, it, it has it has opacity, but it is like intangible for at least yeah that's the only way that that's the only way your brain can process what's happening and but then it's going fully be behind able to like, shoot it yeah you'd have to reposition if you're gonna walk yeah. what to keep watching it uh, so, yeah, i think mean, we gotta move i i really don't want to watch this but i, I think we, we have to we yeah. absolutely have to watch this okay uh if you want to sneak give me a stealth if you want to have... run and get a fat you know i have stealth at 50 i okay. try and sneak yeah uh how do group things worth can you can you make uh if it, because of the the storm you, you'll have a bonus of agent uh worley uh <laughs> makes a success then you can follow uh, in her footsteps i got okay. 44 out of 50 oh yeah exactly so uh you, you are both extremely stealthy hell uh, yeah thank god so you watch it as it's watching the backpackers one of them comes out the tent and you know looking for something you know for a bit uh and then it, he the the backpacker is like a middle-aged man uh he kind of stops uh just stands out in the rain for a moment and then starts walking towards the trail station trailhead station okay hmm. I, I think we should just chill um because hmm. it seems like he's gonna go report whatever it is he just saw so we'll just he should come by us like we're on the way to the the ranger station so yeah you you two can watch uh so the uh backpackers is just marching there the uh giant is stalking the figure or uh, is watching the backpacker march to the station he is uh basically following along as the backpacker keeps marching to the station you two uh because you get a critical success can like bypass it but um you won't be able to keep up with it the entire way without mm. making another stealth check so you because you know you're you're uh you know a couple miles away from the station uh, at this point so uh yeah there's no, yeah there's it would be very hard for you to stay concealed from the giant and watch the backpacker march that direction yeah uh, you can either wait for it to leave and go check on, on the other backpacker because uh, you think there's another person in the tent or uh, in fact, you yeah, you can stay behind and see if something happens. You, you do see someone rustling around in that tent 
or you can make another stealth check and, and follow the backpacker, um, or you can do something um, else. Yeah. So, wanna... so the giant is currently following the backpacker. Yeah, the backpacker that's acting like uh, both of you can give me human checks. Oh boy. Okay. All right, we're real good at this. Ready? Forty-six out of ten. Okay. Yeah. Sixty-nine out of ten. All right. Yeah. The nice. backpacker's just marching in the yeah, just marching out. Having a real normal okay. one. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you, so you're better at stealth. Uh, do you want to trail the giant trailing the guy, or do you want to go check the tent? Because I think we should uh, split up. I also think we should split up, and I will trail the giant. Okay. Yeah. I'll go check the tent then. Okay. Do you uh, want the gun? Yes, please. Uh, well, I'm I think we can both have handguns. Uh, but yeah, if you well, want we rifle, both have yeah. guns. We're talking about the rifle. I, uh, I yeah. Yeah. The rifle. All right. All right. So, uh, Agent March, yeah. um, you see a woman pop out of the tent and be like, um, babe, babe, what? She looks very confused. Uh, uh, uh Bill? I'm going to give my, I'm going to give my standard. I'm a government official. Uh, okay. be like, Hey, I'm, I'm a government official. My name is Agent March. I'm here on behalf of the FBI. Um, oh, oh, it's something wrong. Not a big thing. We're investigating suspicious activity in the area. I just passed by your husband. Uh, we had a small chat. He's on the way to the read at the ranger station. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah he was he, really, he, did he tell you about the, the weirdo he saw? That's exactly what I want to ask you about. We've got supports of suspicious people in the area and I, oh, I want to check yeah. on you and make sure you're safe. Yeah. Bill said he saw somebody watching us in the distance, like a big guy who wasn't wearing a shirt. Uh, and he was going to go tell him off and where did, so Bill's going to the station. Why wouldn't you tell me? That's weird. Bill's usually well, very know, good about that. Storm. Maybe he said something and, you know, just caught caught in the wind. All right. Yeah. Roll persuade. I'll give persuade you plus 20 bonus. All right. Good cover story. Uh, I got a 38. So with the plus 20, that should work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, under 68. Yeah. She's all right. You, you, you've, uh, uh, soothe her anxieties everything's fine he's not gonna go look out for bill uh we'll tell him to come back okay um you know i got we, we uh, should i should we go to the station should i go to the station too is, is there, i would like love for you to to head to the station um, okay stay on the trail nothing bad should happen to you uh there's a fish and wildlife officer you might oh. run into her okay um just head back to the ranger station just let him know what's going oh on oh my this um, this sounds scary is there is it a serial killer i've been watching all i've been listening no to all the it's podcasts. um oh, no no not a serial killer there's just um you ever heard of those cult communes um well yeah yeah is there one out yeah. here oh no yeah there's what? a couple of odd people out here we're gonna go I'll put a lid on it real quick oh not okay to, what do you say when you deals with something mm -hmm. um there's nothing to worry about. Just let the people down at the station know. I'm going to do a mm -hmm. little bit of poking around. Is that all right? Yeah. 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 You mind I, if I, I, I check some of your things that are laying out here. Is that okay? I just want to see if they've, you know, been ruffling through them or not. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'll, yeah. There's that. The, you know, she points out they're, yeah, but they're like moderately experienced, you know, outdoors people. So they have a pretty sizable amount of camping gear and stuff like that. Um, right. Yeah. So, yeah. You could, you could poke around in that for a little bit. Um, so agent Worley, you, uh, did, uh, did you make your second stealth check or do you need to make it? It is a 58 out of 50. That is a failure. So it sure is. All right. Uh, let's see here. Well, he, you make some noise. Okay. Well, it's, it Please. seems like the storm is helping you a little bit. Uh. It's yeah. The, the, yeah. Um, the, they they continue on their course, uh, even though you 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 know break some branches uh, going through the uh, uh, underbrush. So um, they they are, but yeah, the 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 giant. Uh, give me another alertness check with a negative twenty. That is a seventy five out of thirty. Well, you've lost sight of the giant. Um, oh the, boy. Uh, the the backpacker uh, Bill uh, is definitely not possible to miss him. Just walk in a straight line towards the uh, trail station. So, um, oh, is he OK? Here's an important question. Mm -hmm. Is he following the trail or is he just walking straight? Straight. OK, Cl climbing over rocks when he has to. That's not. 
Mm -hmm. Super typical, but mm -hmm. I guess I will just keep following him and see what happens. Uh, so do you, so you've lost sight of the giant. You see the backpacker. Uh, what do you want to do? He's I'm just going to keep. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to keep following that backpacker and see what happens. Okay. So you you watch him for a bit, uh, and he goes straight to the station. Um, so meanwhile, Agent Key, uh, you are in the station. Um, a, another backpacker comes in, you know, talks to Agent or one of the the park ranger, uh, Doug, uh, the one in charge of the station. He seems he's an older man. He seems quite agitated. You can either alertness to eavesdrop in on their conversation, or you can. Budgeon. Let's go ahead and do an alertness. All right. I will go ahead and roll that. Uh, that's a 78 out of 40. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, he seems quite agitated. He gives a report. Doug takes the report uh, and seems a bit concerned uh, and starts writing up a little report about it. But otherwise, nothing happens. Um, okay. Until a man comes in who is absolutely soaking wet. Uh, you, you can give me a human check. That is a 58 out of 60. So just barely made it. Okay, this guy is acting quite weird. He's staring straight ahead. He's not blinking much. Also, his coat uh, has a hood on it and he did not pull it up. So he is absolutely drenched uh, from the, the water. Uh, and he he looks ahead and starts walking past the front desk. He is just l turning around, looking uh, at everyone. And uh, a park range uh, Tamika uh, says, uh, "Hello, sir. Can we help you?" And he just tries to push past uh, Tamika. This concludes part one of Sentinels of Twilight. Please subscribe to this channel so you can be the first to find out what the camper is up to in this conclusion. Can the three agents survive the night? What happened to Brandon McGill? Who was the mysterious giant in the shadows? All of these questions and more will be answered in part two, so stay tuned to Delta Green Killing Field.